Hey guys, welcome to today's episode. And we have Brian Keen of Brian Keen Fitness. And today we're talking all about if you're in a rut and you need some extreme fat loss, some more weight loss. I'm hearing from a lot of you that you've lost 20, 30, 50 pounds doing intermittent fasting. And now you kind of have that last 15 pounds or last 20 pounds And everything that you did before doesn't seem to be working to get that last 10 to 15 off. So that's what we're talking about today. So Brian, welcome. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks so much, Chantelle, for having me on. I'm really looking forward to chatting. So I am a qualified personal trainer, nutritionist. Um, I'm currently based in Ireland, where I grew up and where I live now. Um, I spent years living in California and London and kind of traveling all around the world, working in fitness and health. And I'm really looking forward to looking, diving into the topic. I know it's something that people struggle with where they can't get the last 10, 15, 20 pounds off, but it's actually probably not as difficult as you think. It's just a case of switching some of the things that people have been doing up until now. And I know intermittent fasting is such a fantastic tool to help people get that weight off and get that body fat down. But sometimes you need a little bit extra and doing a few more the last what's very much of what you've done up until now has worked but you've plateaued for a reason so it's just shifting a few things to kind of get that weight loss ticket over again Uh, so i'm looking forward to diving deep into it awesome so let's start with you like what does a day in the life of you look like first so i'm one of those very blessed fortunate people that i have my business is online so When I started working in the health and fitness industry nearly 10 years ago, I was working as a one-to-one personal trainer. That's what I did, uh, working with people on their nutrition as their nutritionist and working in the gym as their trainer. Um, But since 2016, the year after my daughter was born, I moved my business online. So kind of day-to-day now, my programs are all online. My courses are all online. All my clients that I work with are online. Um, So I'm largely in control of my day. So I spend large portions of my day either helping and working with my clients, recording podcasts, either from my podcast, the Brian Game Podcast, or, you know, coming on awesome shows like this, Chantel. So I'm very fortunate with the day, the way my day is split up. Um, But yeah, again, day to day, it's working with clients, working with individuals, spending time with my family, my daughter, my partner. um, And I'm one of those people that gets to live a very blessed life. Well, one of the things that I love that you talk about is just your mindset. And I think that that is something that we kind of forget about because, you know, you are the only one who can change your life and only one that can rewire your own mindset. And so the secret to kind of building more confidence and being able to get your mind wrapped around saying, okay, I am disciplined and this is what I'm, how my life is going to be. And this is my daily habits that I'm going to do. And here's my goals. So let's start with talking about kind of that inner voice and how you can avoid self-sabotage during the day because things kind of come at you and you, I know for me, there's days where I definitely self-sabotage when it comes to my eating because I'm stressed or things happen. So let's talk about what kind of mindset you need to do and what you need to do to switch that. I think it's so important to understand that when it comes to weight loss, when it comes to fat loss, when it comes to any composition change, that when you get your set right, everything else follows because the nutrition, the training or the sleep or the recovery, all of those things kind of follow once the mindset is right, once you kind of get your thinking right. And when it comes to things like self-sabotage, particularly with diet and nutrition, again, I think we've all been there where, you know, we've eaten really well for a week, maybe or 10 days or two weeks. And then the weekend comes or, you know, a party comes and we have a little bit of ice cream or we have a little bit of chocolate or we have a couple of drinks. And before we know it, you know, the floodgates have opened and then we've eaten everything and that's probably put our calories up too high and as a result you don't hit your weight loss target or your fat loss target for that week Um, and that can become such a negative kind of self-fulfilling prophecy over time and you end up beating yourself up and you know telling yourself you're a bad person because you've fallen off your diet and that doesn't make you a bad person you know everybody will have great days with nutrition every other days won't be as good you won't be as strict or as adherent to your nutritional plan like I would argue that it's about finding what's sustainable for you like what I love about your podcast Chantel is your message is on intermittent fasting and weight loss and it's very clear that the people who use intermittent fasting for weight loss it's something that works for them it 
works into their lifestyle. It works into their schedule. It helps them with the caloric deficit, which is what they need to do to lose body fat, get their calories down so, you know, they can make themselves tap into stored fat for fuel or, you know, making themselves a little bit more fat adapted in the sense that, you know, they're not riding this blood sugar roller coaster throughout the day of, of carbs and eating processed foods and then blood sugar spiking and eating that again. And I think when it comes to finding what works for you, when it comes to nutrition, that's all your mindset. You know, it's not that there's an X or a Y diet that fits everybody. You know, the beauty of this podcast and your message is the people listening know that intermittent fasting works. It supports the caloric deficit. It's something that can make you feel that you're not riding this blood sugar roller coaster throughout the entire day. You know, you feel a lot better cognitively, which can, you know, help you stay on plan. And what that can do is that reduces your amount of times that you sell sabotage because you found something that works for you. In a lot of cases, Chantelle, I bet if you go back and think about all the times that you've self-sabotaged or anybody listening to this podcast has self-sabotaged with their nutrition or their diet, it was probably because you were doing something a little bit unsustainable for you at the time. You know, as of now, when you found something that works for you, it's a lot easier to stay on it and stick on it. And those periods of self-sabotage and just, you know, pressing the flipper button and eating at house and home, restricting too long, it become less and less. And I think when you get your mindset right and realize that what you consistently do every day is what determines your body look or how your body looks in general, it's not about how you eat today. It's not about how you ate you know, one single day. It's about how you eat consistently over time and the food choices you're making. And I think that's a mindset shift. That's just seeing how you're looking at food, how you're looking at your lifestyle and then making your diet fit that. But then you can experiment with, you know, different food choices within that intermittent fasting plan. And then if you find that you keep self-sabotaging and falling off, maybe you're not including enough foods that you like and you need to be a little bit less restrictive with your food choices. So you're experimenting all the way and not seeing things like failure and falling off your plan as a bad thing so you can find a plan that's sustainable for you long term hey guys i'm so excited my new book one meal and a tasting is out now and if you order the book on amazon just the regular paperback edition if you go in and make a review you will get the audio book for free send a copy of your receipt to questions at chantelrayway.com and you'll get the audio book right away And one of the things that is so important is that self-discipline is a muscle that you build over time and you have to build your own daily pillars of self-discipline so that you can learn how to do things that you know you should do, whether you feel like it or not, and figuring out what plan is sustainable for you. And so for me, um, you know, I just wrote another book and it's called a meal and a tasting. And I really, after I interviewed all these women of what they did, it seemed like the the thinnest women were eating one meal and then they were having one tasting. Sometimes they might had two tasting. And, you know, again, I loved what you just said because it is truly about figuring out what is sustainable because it's like if, okay, if you can do this for one day, great. If you can do it for two days, great. Then that's not, that's not going to help because then if you're just going to fall off the wagon, it's like, what good is it? Yeah. hundred percent. As you said there, you know, the, the pillars of self-discipline. That's what I talk about in my second book, Rewire Your Mindset, that, you know, one of my favorite lines that I get my clients to try and brain tattoo is that, you know, successful people do the thing they have to do regardless of how they feel. And I think especially in the beginning, when you're starting a weight loss journey or a fat loss journey, there's going to be things that you might not necessarily want to do, but you have to experiment and see if it works for you. I think fasting is brilliant for this because everyone that probably came into intermittent fasting first probably had some misconceptions around it. You know, I'll be hungry all the time. I'll overeat at the next meal. And, you know, all these kind of self-limiting stories that might stop them doing it. But then when they experiment with it and realize, well, actually, you know, I'm, I feel less hungry. You know, I feel really good and really mentally clear. And they've experimented with it and they see that this actually works for me. It's a lot easier to plug it in. And I think understanding that that pillars of self-discipline look different for different people. You know, in a lot of cases, when weight loss is the goal, or fat loss is the goal, or changing your body composition is the goal. It's just making a list of two or three things that you need to do consistently in order to try and hit your weight loss target or your fat loss target. You know, if it's intermittent fasting, you know, you have a time restricted window that you eat. That's what I love so much about it. There's genius and simplicity in it. You know, if you're doing, you know, 16, eight, 
means that you're fasting for 16 hours and you're eating for eight hours. And that's it. There's, there's no, it's black and white. It's easy to follow. And then, you know, obviously you're going to have some cho- food choices element in there. You know, you don't want to go over on your calories if fat loss is your goal or weight loss is your goal, but it's a plan that can really help. So you experiment with that. You know, other things when it comes to pillars of self-discipline might be, you know, preparing some meals if you're on the road or you're traveling. Like, especially now as, you know, the world goes back to normal after a crazy 18 months, like, I know if I'm driving somewhere or giving a speech or giving a talk somewhere, I'll always bring food with me, some healthy snacks, some, you know, almonds or some oats, you know, in a, in a shaker, just because otherwise I get very tempted by the chocolate bars when I pull in to get gas, you know, and it's these little systems over willpower that can help you with the dietary plan and can help you with the nutritional plan. So there's their systems over willpower. They're building pillars of self-discipline because you're doing things that you know would make your life better and help you hit your end goal faster although you may not necessarily want to do them that might be going for you know a gym workout or a home workout or you know trying to hit 10,000 steps a day target whatever it is there might be something there that you know if you did it it would massively help you with your goal particularly say those last 10 15 20 pounds because you probably have to do something different to get new results you know the more extreme the goal the more extreme the, the change that you need to make in order to elicit that change so you're doing that and keeping that in mind but that self-discipline gets easier over time. It's like a muscle. You know, if you remember sort of Ch- Chantel, the first time that, you know, you ever done a workout, you know, or the first time that you ever hit a certain step count or the first time you ever did anything that was new to your body, it felt hard in the beginning, but then it got easier over time. You know, same as everything. Doing this podcast, you're 300 plus episodes in, you know, remember the first one you did, it was, it was harder. You know, I remember my first podcast, it was difficult. And the first five were tricky and then it got easier after 10. And then when you get to 300 plus, it nearly becomes automatic. And that's how self-discipline is. It gets easier. It's like repetition, like a muscle that gets stronger over time. And that's the exact same with your nutrition. That's the exact same with your diet and the food choices. And that's the same with discipline across the board. As you consistently do things, they become easier and you build that self-discipline muscle. Well, I'm going to give a little this isn't really a question, but she said, she says, hi, Chantel, I turned my friend on to your protocol in your first audiobooks. She is a chronic dieter and Weight Watchers was her go to but she could never stick to it long term because of all the points counting. I've never known her to be thin. She was super skeptical, but she's lost seven pounds in two weeks. And it just keeps melting away. She's amazed. I told her you had the secret sauce. Have a great day, Nikki. P.S. I was on vacation at an amusement park last week. And I found it impossible to fast. I was just so hungry walking around and swimming. It was so hot. I felt like I was going to faint. I listened to my body and I felt better. I think that's what I like most. I learned my body's cues. I learned my body cue, body's cues makes things so much easier. So she didn't have a question, but I do want you to address that because I thought I think she made some really, really good points there of how you kind of listen to your body. And I want you to tell some more of those tips that you were talking about that will really help your self-discipline muscle grow. So when it comes to what's been said there in terms of the, the, the statements, the kind of the questions, I think it's important to understand that one of the reasons that intermittent fasting works so well is because what happens is you get a little bit better with identifying your hunger signals. You know, like everybody has hunger signals that get largely disrupted if you're eating, you know, a traditional diet, eating every few hours, processed foods, lots of carbohydrates, et cetera. You know, if you're eating low nutrient foods, you know, the the processed stuff that's very easy to get, those hunger signals get kind of thrown out of whack. Like they're there. I won't get too much of the science, but the the ghrelin and leptin hunger hormone signals. One tells you you're full, one the other tells you you're satiated and and you're hungry. And what happens is when you start intermittent fasting, your blood sugar levels start to balance out a little bit and your hunger cues become better. Meaning that when you're genuinely hungry, you can sense it more. And that's why it can lend itself so well. What I would also say there, just to kind of piggyback on the second question or the second part was it takes a while for your body to make that switch. You know, if you've gone and the biggest tip I give people when it comes to something like intermittent fasting initially is you need to give it a certain window of time because some people will really struggle initially with that period of non-eating. 
Because if you think about it, it's like trying to run your, your car on with zero gas. If you go not eating for a while and your body's so reliant on glucose and carbohydrate and the food you've been eating, there's going to be a transitional period till your body gets better with fat adaption, you know, and, you know, ketones and ketone release, which can all come with that. So you need to give it a window of time. So the expectation is important on the front end. If you've been following a weight loss plan and weight watchers and jumping around on lots of different diets for the last five, 10 years, you're not going to jump into intermittent fasting and find that it's easy overnight. It's going to take a week or a couple of weeks or several weeks to your body to become adjusted to it. But like everything, it's going from zero to one. The hardest part of most journeys is the initial first step. So it's that zero to one being harder than going from one to 10. So what I would say here is, with your mindset, with your discipline, it's a, give yourself enough runway of time to be successful with it. And that goes for every change that you make. Any nutritional protocol you follow, you have to give yourself enough runway of time to see if it's working. And I think intermittent fasting is the key one for that because it's different for the likes of high endurance athletes. You know, if you take a marathon runner that's training multiple hours a day, it's going to be a lot easier to put them into an intermittent fasting protocol because a lot of them are going to be quite fat adapted already. So in a week, they're going to feel great. Whereas somebody that has 30, 40, 50 pounds to lose, it's going to take several weeks to make that adjustment. So give yourself enough runway of time to make yourself successful with it. And that just comes down to the way you see the situation. That comes down to your mindset and not getting frustrated on the front end because it hasn't worked after two days. You know, something I'll tell people is, you know, if it took you, you know, you didn't put on 50 pounds in two days, you're not going to lose it in two days. You know, it took longer to go on. So just give yourself that runway of time and set yourself up from success on the front end, particularly when it comes to adding in the intermittent fasting. As you said, that, they're, that the proof is in the pudding, Chantel. It works for people for a reason, because if they found that this is the plan that they can stick to, they're going to be successful with it over the long term. Hey guys, I'd love for you guys to listen to a podcast that we did about the side effects from wine and the differences between natural wine and traditional wine. So go to ChantelRayway.com slash wine and you'll see transcripts, you'll see some different episodes, but here's the thing. You can get your penny bottle now of dry farm wines and make the decision that if you're going to have wine, to make sure you have the most natural, healthy wine in the world with no added additives, only natural ingredients. All the other wines out there have so much sulfate, so much sugar. Why put that poison in your body? So get your penny bottle now at ChantelRayWay.com slash wine. So one of the things you said is that nutrition, I remember on your website somewhere, it was like nutrition is a science, not an opinion, but the science is knowing what to do. The art is, is knowing how to do it. So I want you to just dive into nutrition. And one of the nice things about intermittent fasting is that, you know, you can you don't have to be so perfect, you know, you want to, you can kind of, you know, if you want this, you can have a little bit of this. Um, but I want you to talk about what are the things as far as nutrition that you teach people, give us kind of a nutrition 101 that you say, here's some of the basics that you give us a tasting of what's in your courses. So when it comes to, you're making reference to my nutrition course. So that's uh, the course where I educate people on nutrition. So it certifies people in nutrition at the end. It's been my kind of area and my passion for years. I love it. But when it comes to scientific science and nutrition, I would keep it very straightforward and understanding how basic calories work. Like at the end of the day, if there's only one thing you needed to understand when it comes to fat loss and weight loss, one, I would separate those two things. They're, they're actually two different things. Weight loss is reducing the numbers on a scale. It's a, it's a metric of success. Fat loss is reducing the amount of fat on your body. Like it, they, they can be very confusing for people because sometimes they'll step on a scale and be like, oh, you know, the scale has gone up or stayed the same, but actually their body fat may have reduced. You know, intermittent fasting can help with this as well because, you know, if you're dropping calories down or in your weight, weight training, for example, and doing resistance training, you know, body weight workouts at home, et cetera, if you're building a little bit of lean muscle tissue as well, your weight's not necessarily going to drop, but your body fat levels could drop. So it's, un it's important to understand those, that they're two different things. It's not a right or a wrong. It's just understanding that they're two different things. You know, losing numbers on a scale is losing weight. Reducing fat in your body is losing body fat. And when it comes to calories then and the basic science of it is calories work very basically. They're the energy for the body. If you think about it when you com it comes to food. 
And a calorie maintenance is the amount of calories you need to eat every day to stay around the same weight, the same body fat, let's say. So let's say, for example, Chantel, you put your details into a TDD calculator, which is like total daily energy expenditure calculator. It's got your age, your height, your weight, your activity levels. And it comes back and says, look, Chantel, to stay the same weight, you need to eat 2,000 calories every day. Again, that number could be different. I'm just using it for easiness sake. Any number above that is a calorie surplus, which means that you're consuming excess calories that is going to lead to weight gain. It's going to lead to fat gain on your body. Any number below that allows your body to tap into stored fat and use it for fuel. That's effectively how calories 101 work. You know, maintenance to stay the same, 1200 or 2100 calories, 2500 calories is a 500 calorie surplus for you, for example, and that's going to lead to weight gain over time. You know, you drop it by 500 calories, 1500 calories every day, you're going to lose weight and lose body fat over time. So understanding that's really, really important because Every nutritional protocol you consider and fat loss plan that you've ever heard of works off that principle. That's how intermittent fasting is so effective for it. It's why I love it so much as a tool is because if you restrict yourself to consuming less calories within a window of time, you're going to find that you're eating less. And as a result, your calories for the day or the week or the month come down and you end up tapping into that stored fat in your body and burning that with fuel. That's why it's such an effective tool. Now, there's secondary benefits to intermittent fasting, you know, as I mentioned earlier, that blood sugar balance, like you're not going to have those hunger spikes because you're not eating, you know, loads of processed foods and carbs, assuming that you're not eating that within the window of time that you're eating. So you're not going to have this blood sugar spike. So you're going to find it easier to stay on plan and you're going to probably feel better. In a fasted state, you'll find that your levels of ketones in your body will raise a little bit. So you'll cognitively feel really good. And that needs to, you know, I don't know if you've done this, Chantel, I'm sure you have, because I definitely have. Like when you're feeling a bit tired or a bit run down or a bit brain dead, you're like, I'd love a chocolate bar just to pick you up, you know, a cup of coffee and a chocolate bar. And, you know, you don't have to avoid that on intermittent fasting. But when it comes to a normal plan where you're just eating every several hours, you find that you, you're not cognitively as switched on. You don't feel as good brain wise, brain function wise. But when you're fasting, you are. So it makes it easier to not reach for a chocolate bar at 10 a.m., you know, or some biscuits or some cookies at 10 a.m. So all of these things add up over time and can compound really positively. So when it comes to basic nutrition, understanding calories, now you can go into the weeds on macronutrients and effects on blood sugars and physiology of hormones and everything along those lines. And they can be really useful to understand. But basic education around calories in, calories out, surplus maintenance and deficit can be really, really helpful for people to understand. One of the things that I have eliminated a little bit in my diet, which they're both very good for you, but I think that I've realized that when I have some too many nuts. My skin doesn't look as do as well. And, um, avocado. So there, there are certain things you have to look at, like avocado is so good for you. But like, for me, I can eat way too much avocado. Like I love guacamole. So I'll do like cucumbers and with guacamole. Well, that is just so high in fat and so many calories that I can just get crazy with it. Same thing with nuts. Before I know it, I'm having an, an, a, a, just way too many nuts. I mean, you know, uh, macadamia nuts, like I love them, but they are also, you know, uh, you could get a hundred, you know, per ounce, they're like 204 calories. Well, one ounce of nuts is not very much. I mean, I could eat three ounces of nuts, you know, in a very quickly, like pecans, again, most nuts are somewhere around 180 to 200 calories per ounce. And it's, you're not overeating by any, like I, if I sat there and had three ounces of nuts, which would be 600 calories, I would not be probably full, full, right? So that's still a lot of calories. So I think a lot of it is being cognizant of some of these really high calorie foods and saying, it's not that I can't have them and it's not that it's not good, but am I going overboard on them? 100%. And what makes that so easy, if I was to add one thing to the calorie argument, 
in terms of in, in understanding how basic in, in nutritional science works is understand macro profiles and how they work for calories. Like every gram of carbohydrate has four kilocalories per gram. Every gram of protein has four kilocalories per gram. Every gram of fat has nine kilocalories per gram. So for every gram of fat you eat, there's more than double the calories. And that's not to say avoid those foods. As you mentioned, you know, um, uh, guacamole, avocado, nuts, they're all really good food choices, but they're also very calorific. So if your goal is weight loss and fat loss, you need to be mindful that they're very high calorie foods that in the danger of being in the dose may not support a weight loss or fat loss journey. Hey guys, I really want you to join our Intermittent Fasting and OMAD Facebook group. We're doing tons of giveaways right now for posting your before and after pictures and just for posting a question in there. We're giving away free protein shakes, some digest aid, all kinds of fun stuff. So please join our Intermittent Fasting and OMAD Facebook group. The link is in the show notes. Mm. So give us a couple more tips that you can give us that say like, here's some things that you, if you had to say, okay, um, I'm looking at you and they, again, like this, this is a perfect example. They're thinking they're doing everything right, but they're eating two avocados, three avocados in one sitting, having four handfuls of nuts. Like what are some of these things that people think they're doing the right thing, but it's really sabotaging some of their weight loss? Um, not understanding how calories work over the week versus the day. And what I mean by that is somebody that will go and have, well, I'll have salad for lunch. You know, I'll have a, you know, a smoothie for breakfast. I'll have a salad for lunch, you know, and really under eat or think they're under eating on calories during the week and then just completely over consume at the weekend, you know, eat all the cookies in the house, go for a few drinks, you know, have a bowl of ice cream and their calories massively shoot up. And what's important to understand is, you need to be in a caloric deficit over time. It's not what you do day to day. It's what you do consistently. So for example, if you're in a calorie deficit, meaning that, you know, you've been really good Monday to Friday, but you've massively overeaten on Saturday, Sunday. And at the end of the seven days, you're still in a surplus, your fat levels are going to go up. And I think people forget that, that, you know, it's like, well, I was really good during the week. You know, I'll have whatever I want at the weekend. And I'm not saying don't enjoy the weekends. I'm, I'm a big proponent of balance and finding what you like and what you can stick to and sustain. But understand that calories matter over the space of a week, over the space of a month. And people fall down that way. You know, I've worked with lots of clients, Chantel, over the last few years who will calculate and give me food diaries on a, you know, Monday to Friday and then give it to me for Saturday and Sunday. And if I calculate their calories, I'm like, well, you're way over. I'm like, you're in, you're in a thousand calories surplus. They're like, I, but, I, but I had salad every day for lunch. I'm like, it doesn't matter. I'm like, it doesn't matter. I'm like, your calories are too high at the end of the week. That's why your fat levels are up. And I'm, it's not to say don't do that. I'm like, but if your goal is fat loss, do the things that are going to help you and support you with that. And that's something that people can fall down on, you know, so not making those food choices, like you said, number one, not understanding the calories and very high calorie options in some foods. Number two, not accounting for and seeing the entire week as a whole, you know, is something that holds a lot of people back. And then the third one is that, you know, you have to decide on the front end, how fast do you want the results? You know, when I tell, when people ask me, you know, what's the fastest way to lose body fat? You know, I normally tell them, right, you know, stop eating completely, work out 15 hours a day or move to the moon where there's, you know, no low gravity and you weigh less. Like one of those three things will work, but that's not the most efficient way to lose body fat or lose weight. You know, the most efficient way is to either do small consistent changes. Like you said there, we are more mindful of foods over time or, you know, find a very sustainable plan that you stick to consistently you know so though th that wording is important you know do you want to lose weight really fast if you do do that what i said in the latter you know if you want to lose it very efficiently do what i said in the former do what i said in the latter apologies and i think it's just that wording is important when it comes to weight loss and fat loss and then give yourself a runway of time like what's your realistic goal length you know do you want to lose a lot of weight in a week or two weeks for a wedding or a festival or an event or something coming up that you're going to, yeah, okay, you can drop your calories drastically and you probably won't do any negative impact. You know, but if you did that same drastic reduction in calories for six, eight, 12, 15, 18 weeks, you're going to get some effects on your metabolic effects that are going to be negative, you know, and you'll have to do what's called metabolic restoration where you restore your metabolism because you've damaged it. So you have to 
decide what's your time frame realistically. Like, is it six weeks? Is it eight weeks? Is it two weeks? And then your plan needs to reverse engineer that. And then all you do is you make small changes that you can stick to. If you're doing intermittent fasting now already, all you're doing is being a bit more mindful of your food choices. Like you said there, Chantel, maybe that's it. That will connect with a lot of people who are listening and going, oh my God, I overeat nut butter, you know, or I love peanut butter, or I love, you know, guacamole, so I'm not Chantel. And they're like, just being a bit more mindful of those calories will be the thing that helps them lose weight, you know, and others will be the opposite. They're like, oh, I've been eating really well Monday to Friday, but actually I've been eating whatever I want at the weekend. Maybe my calories are too high. So it's just trial and error and experimenting about what works best for you based on the time frame that you give yourself and then finding a, an effective course of action based on the time frame. I love it. Well, here's what I want to encourage our listeners to do in our Facebook group. I'd love for you to start snapping a picture of everything that you eat and say what time you ate it, but then consistently do it um, and say, here's what I had for lunch. Here's what I, how I, this is how, where my started. Here's what I ended. And that's super easy. You don't, you just can put, here's how much I started. Here's how much I ended. And then let us kind of all work together because here's the thing. I think that it really does kind of look at it and go, okay, am I just eating too much? I know this weekend I just was on vacation and I normally don't eat until about one or two, but I was really craving an egg white frittata and they could, they only served it until 11 o'clock. And so I ended up eating it at 11 and then I ended up kind of overeat a little overeating the rest of the day because it was like I started my window early. You know, I kind of I wasn't really hungry when I had that egg white frittata because I'm not used to normally eating until one or two. It's just kind of one of those things where it's like, OK, then I made that choice and then another choice and another choice. So they really build on each other, I think, don't you? When you start making like, like it's an egg white frittata. It's not like it was anything horrible. But again, it was like, I felt like I I still overate because I wasn't really hungry, hungry when I started eating it. Yeah, and it's so easy to happen. And what I offer people there is, you know, you reset the next day and you go again. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's so easy to beat yourself up or, you know, I love that you've got a good relationship with food and you're like, okay, that's, this is what happened. You know, here's the story. And it's not a, oh my God, I'm a bad person for this. Like, but some people have that language. And I think it's very important to realize that if you fall off track, you know, and you're on vacation in particular, I'm all about, you know, the, the rules don't necessarily apply, you know, enjoy the vacation, come back and back on plan and just reset again and go, you know, and you're back on your normal eating window and, you know, you're back home now. It's probably the same. You're probably back into your normal one or two eating window and that's fine. You know, and if that happens to people, I think it's just ease up on yourself. You don't need to jump on your back or, you know, have any of this internal dialogue going on that, you know, I can't stick to a diet or I'm a bad person or any of these things and you just reset and you go again. Love it. Well, this has been great. Tell listeners where they can find you and where they can follow you. Amazing. Thank you so much, Chantel. So the Brian Keen podcast, probably the best one for uh, similar conversations around all things nutrition, lots of nutrition stuff on there. Uh, Instagram is Brian underscore Keen underscore fitness. Um, and then my books are on amazon.com, fitness mindset, my first one, rewire your mindset. Um, but just put me into Google, Brian Keen fitness and all my stuff comes up. Awesome. Thanks so much. And you guys stay tuned. We've got another episode coming up in just a few. Bye-bye for now.